Today I am going to listen a story about Defiance in the Hunger Games In the bleak and unforgiving world of Paynham, there existed a place known as District 12. This desolate coal mining district was a place where the sun rarely shone, and the faces of its people were etched with the scars of hardship. Amidst this sea of sorrow lived a young girl named Katniss Everdeen. She was sixteen years old, yet her spirit was far older, weighed down by the burdens of a life marred by loss and struggle. Katniss's world had crumbled when her father passed away, leaving her to shoulder the responsibilities of her family. She became a skilled hunter, venturing into the forbidden woods outside District 12 to track and kill animals, the only source of sustenance for her mother, younger sister Prim, and herself. Her days were filled with the heart-wrenching task of taking life to preserve her own. But this, Katniss believed, was the price of survival in a world that cared little for the people of District 12. It was a frigid morning when the world around her descended into darkness once again. The annual reaping had arrived, the day when one boy and one girl from each district would be selected as tributes to participate in the brutal Hunger Games. It was a vile spectacle, a reminder of the capital's unyielding grip over the districts and its thirst for power. The odds were never in anyone's favor, especially those from District 12. Katniss and Prim stood among the sea of solemn faces that had gathered in the square. The reaping was a ceremony dreaded by all, and it hung in the air like an impending storm. As the names were drawn, the tension thickened, each paper slip held the potential to shatter lives. It was this year, however, that the storm would find its target, for Prim's name was chosen. The crowd gasped, a collective gasp of anguish that swirled through the square like a whirlwind. The people of District 12 knew the horrors that awaited a tribute in the Hunger Games, and the thought of their beloved Prim becoming a pawn in the capital's cruel game was too much to bear. Katniss felt her heart seize with panic as she watched her sister tremble in the spotlight. But then, something extraordinary happened. Katniss heard a voice, her own voice, but it felt distant, like it was coming from another person. I volunteer, she shouted. It was a moment of clarity and sacrifice, a choice she had made without thinking, driven only by the love for her sister. She rushed to the stage, her name replacing Prim's on the slip of paper. The reaping continued, and the name of the boy tribute was called Peter Mellark. Katniss had known him from a distance, the baker's son who had tossed her a burnt piece of bread years ago when her family was starving. Now, he too would become a tribute, a pawn in the capital's game. Katniss and Peta were taken away, leaving behind their grieving families. Their journey had begun, one that would test their limits, 
challenge their morals, and expose them to the harsh reality of desensitization to mass death. The capital had designed the Hunger Games to strip away humanity, to force tributes to kill one another for the amusement of the masses. As Katniss and Peta made their way to the capital, they were subjected to the opulent excesses and cruelty of the capital's residents. The capital was a world far removed from the bleakness of District 12, a place where people reveled in extravagance and frivolity while the district suffered. The disconnect was jarring, and it only served to strengthen Katniss's resolve to survive, if only to spite the capital. In the arena, the true horror of the Hunger Games was unveiled. Tributes were pitted against each other in a savage battle for survival. The forest was littered with hidden dangers, from deadly creatures to lethal traps set by the game makers. The desensitization to death was not a gradual process, but a violent baptism by fire. Katniss had to adapt quickly to the merciless reality of the arena. It was a battle of wits and survival, and Katniss and Peta formed an unlikely alliance. Together, they navigated the treacherous terrain, using their respective skills to evade the other tributes. They shared stories of their lives in District 12, a place where hope was a rare commodity, and the weight of death was a constant companion. The arena was a place of death, and Katniss and Peta could do nothing to change that fact. They watched as their fellow tributes, many of them children, fell victim to the ruthless environment and the ruthless desires of the capital. The desensitization to mass death was an inescapable consequence of their situation. It was survival or death, and they had chosen the former. As the days passed, the line between friend and foe blurred. The capital's sadistic manipulation of the games had forced them to betray their own humanity. The realization that they were merely pieces on a macabre chessboard weighed heavily on their hearts. Katniss's once strong aversion to taking life had weakened, for in the arena, it was kill or be killed. One by one, the tributes were eliminated until only a handful remained. Katniss and Peta's bond grew stronger as they clung to each other for support. They had become each other's lifeline, a flicker of humanity in the midst of the darkness. But the capital demanded a victor, and it was a demand they couldn't ignore. In the end, it came down to a bitter choice. Katniss and Peta were the last two standing, and the capital would not tolerate a joint victory. The desensitization to mass death had reached its zenith, and the capital's hold on their souls was undeniable. The Hunger Games had succeeded in its goal to strip away their humanity, and the only way out was to defy the capital's cruel order. In a daring move, Katniss and Peta threatened to consume poisonous berries, a final act of defiance. 
They would rather die together than be puppets of the capital's whims. The game makers, realizing the implications of such an act, quickly intervened and declared them both victors. The capital would not allow them to escape its grasp so easily. Returning to District 12, Katniss and Peeta were hailed as heroes, but the scars of the Hunger Games ran deep. They had survived, but at a heavy cost. The experience had forever changed them, and the desensitization to mass death was a burden they would carry for the rest of their lives. Katniss's story became a symbol of resistance, a beacon of hope in a world shrouded in darkness. She had defied the capital, shown the people of the districts that even in the face of cruelty and despair, humanity could prevail. The harsh reality of desensitization to mass death was a lesson she hoped to impart to young readers, a warning of the consequences of a world that had lost its compassion. As the years passed, Katniss and Peeta's love for each other deepened, a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit. Their story was a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there was still light to be found. The Hunger Games had taken much from them, but it had also given them the strength to fight for a better future. In the end, Katniss Everdeen's journey was not just a tale of survival, but a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. It was a story of love, sacrifice, and defiance, a reminder that even in a world that sought to desensitize its inhabitants to mass death, there was always room for compassion and hope. Katniss had faced the horrors of the Hunger Games and emerged as a symbol of resistance, a spark of humanity in the darkest of times. Her story would live on, a beacon for young readers to understand the harsh reality of desensitization to mass death and the power of the human spirit to overcome it. Hope you like the story. Hit the like button and share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and turn on the notification. Thank you.